Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. Welcome back. It's lovely to see you again. You'll notice that we're still in um, in lockdown in our various respective homes. We're not in uh, the loft. We're no, not wafting from the loft. It's not fair. It's not right. But I no. think this thing looks like it's on the way down for the time being. So That's maybe okay. some light at the, end, at the end of the tunnel. And we've brought something to cheer your, your hearts today. Um, yeah, new yeah, release. So. I mean, how new is this, Dan? Is it, it's pretty um, new, isn't it? I'm trying to think. It, it arrived about four or five days ago. It came out about uh, 10 days ago or something like that. It is Amouage Interlude Black Iris. Man, here we go. I mean, I bought That's it. That's a I bought it uh, within minutes of it going on sale. Um, so it's, it's very much a blind buy for me. Um, yeah, I've had, Which... I do have, I, I, was, I was showing Joe before, it's not my first bottle of Interlude. I've also got, <laughs> <laughs> so these are the original uh, interlude. And I think um, this, this one is, is my, it's my ninth Amouage bottle. So, yeah. <laughs> That's a good little collection, isn't it? And of course, interlude was the second video we ever did. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, it was. So over two, well, just over two years ago. I think it's the second video we ever did. God, so, so, I mean, that's, that's quite a nostalgic, a nostalgic thing to be talking about, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, um, why, why have they changed interlude then? What's the story with this one? Iris Man. Black Iris. Black Iris Man. Well, it, yeah. it, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because um, Christopher Chung, who was the artistic uh, director of Amouage for 12 years, I think, he left in November and I think I'm right in saying that this is the first um, release under the new uh, regime if you like and I yeah. did a little bit of research to see if they had a new artistic director and I think um, I, do, I don't think they have an artistic director anymore I think they have a CEO and then they have a head of kind of customer relations so I think they've kind of changed the kind of structure a little bit but anyway yeah it's really so outsourcing their perfumes now to sort of individuals as a, as a sort of a, I don't know, they still need a creator though, don't they, to do that? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. You would think. I mean, obviously, they always always had perfumers coming in, people like Pierre Negrin, who's on this, and yeah. before, and really, really great um, perfumers. But I presume there's still, you know, somebody who's the kind of driving artistic heart yeah. at, at, at the head of Amouage. But it's just very interesting that the, the, the first release they come out with is... Uh, a flanker. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's a that's a bold move, isn't it? Hmm. Good or bad, we're not sure yet. I mean, it's also it's the first it's the first blank flanker I've ever bought. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's good going. Um, because as you see, I mean, I really love uh, the original. These these are yeah, it's great stuff. This is I, I've got it because this is the magnetic cap uh, one which I bought originally, and then everybody said, "Oh, the friction cap." Is so much better. Um, so I bought that one. I mean, I've got to say, there's not, <laughs> there's not a huge mountain of difference between those two. But what about this one? Yeah. And the other thing I was uh, saying to you as well, Joe, that I was one of the reasons I, I blind bought this is, I, I, I love the original, but I also love, I love Iris, and I particularly love it when it's used in a kind of a dark context. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, Me too. I mean, we, uh, there's a fragrance by uh, Pierre Guillaume, which I love, called Cuid Iris, which is this really, really dark, leathery, amazing quality it's great iris. stuff, isn't it? Um, and then there's one by Atelier des Or called Iris Fauve, which it starts off very quite lipsticky, irisy, and then it goes to this really dark, balsamic, amazing thing. And of course, Iris Soir by uh, Sultan Pasha, which is, it's not only the best amazing. iris fragrance I've ever smelled, but it's... Um, one of the best fragrances I've ever smelled, full stop. And it's Iris yeah. and Soir, it's, it's this dark fragrance. So anyway, I, I wanted to see what a dark fragrance like Interlude was like when it um, compared, um, when it's you know, combined or however, or however with, the, with the original Interlude DNA. Mm. So I, I bought this, I've sent, as you'll see, Joe's sniffing a little sample there. So I sent this to him last week so we could um, see what we think. Joe, what do you think? Yeah. Um... Being brutally honest, I don't see the point. <laughs> if I'm being mean, I think it's very nice. I think it's still recognizably interlude, but it's just a slight tweaking. 
and I fail. I kind of fail to see the point of it. It's not different enough from Interlude to warrant any great shakes, in my opinion. And maybe that maybe I'm being mean. I don't know. What do you think? I think it's interesting because I saw when it was announced and people looked at the notice, you know, the notes list. I saw a few people on Facebook saying, "Oh, is it like Diorom combined with Interlude?" Um, because it's got this iris note, or is it is it like um, Fahrenheit because of the violet leaf? I mean, it basically, w when you spray it, you won't think Joram intense or, or any of the Joram line. You won't no. think Fahrenheit. You will think interlude. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the first thing that comes to mind when you smell this. That mm. it is interlude, man. Um, there, I mean, the iris is in there for sure, it's but it's not. Yeah. It's not, it's not the kind of iris that blows me away or makes me think, oh my God, this is so exciting. What's it doing? That's the thing. It's, it's sort of neither nor. The, yeah, the iris in this is not, I think you just hit the nail. It's just not exciting. It's, um, you know, iris can go one of two ways. It can go this a kind of lipsticky, slightly powdery, slightly chalky, um, almost kind of plasticky direction. Or you can get oris root, which is used to create this real kind of rich leathery quality. Yeah. Um, this is kind of somewhere in between. I mean, it's, it's slightly, um, rather than plasticky or lipsticky, I would say it's just a little bit sweet. That's it, absolutely. I mean, I'm smelling it from the cap here, but I'll, I've been wearing it all day, as I said to you earlier. Hmm. And the thing I found was that it was interlude minus that lovely oregano spiciness you get at the beginning and it sort of starts to just veer into what i would describe as interlude light like a slightly designer if you sort of did a designer interlude yeah i mean that's a little the, bit um, more sweet a little bit more approachable that's i mean i remember but, when i i remember when i first why? tried this with i think I, I was with you you know years a couple of years after it came out and we were in harrods and we were smelling a few different things and we've been smelling things all day and you said oh you've got to try this on from the amouage and i remember i sprayed it and i was like oh my god what, yeah. what is it like it was it completely like it was too much and then and then you know a few months later i came back to it and then i remember i had a, a sample and I actually went on a it was a skiing holiday normally when you go skiing everything's so cold so everything's muted down fragrance is muted down but this interlude was still um it was so vivid and it was Yes, it's this big, like, smoky balsamic thing, but it's that burnt yeah. oregano note. I thought, I haven't encountered this oregano note before, and oh, it's so interesting. And this is one of the things which, you know, really sets apart. Apart from this, then you have this lovely, long, smoky, there's, there's the Amani silver frankincense, and there's that beautiful Apophonite sweet myrrh thing, all of that, but it's the yeah. oregano. And he's, it's, it's, I, I think it's still there. I think it's not on the notes list anymore. And I think it is still there a bit, but it's just really, really toned down. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the thing that I, that I found, that all of the things that I loved in the original interlude were all just toned down slightly. And, it, you know, it wasn't like, to take an example, I've, you know, I've got a couple of flankers of things, but one of the things I have is Fahrenheit Absolute, hmm. which takes the Fahrenheit DNA, but then it, adds a sort of a, a synthetic oud it adds a sort of slightly dirty cumin aspect mm. so it's it's sort of it's an additional thing which it kind of ramps it up and makes it something mm. makes it something to take you in a different direction i don't think this takes you in a different direction it's like going in the same direction mm. it's like being in a car and going in the same direction but just having two fewer wheels than you had before but I also i do Somehow. think that the um I found the Oris or the Iris or the Oris disappeared after a while. After, totally, about, yeah. after about four hours, I wasn't really aware of it. So neither was it this big lipsticky top note, nor was it this rich leathery Oris. No, it does, does neither really. Um, I, it's still, we, sound, I know we probably sound quite critical. We're being critical because this and this, <laughs> you know, they're the same thing. They yeah. are, they are, they are masterpieces. I'm, I've got to be honest, this interlude back Monaris is a really good fragrance. But why would you buy it instead of interlude? Well, this is what brings me to, to a question I have, is why have they released this? And is there some motive behind it? You know, is there some intention maybe that this is a transitional fragrance and maybe interlude vanishes from the shells at some point? I don't and know. And people in general, I don't know. I mean, 
it's speculation. So let's go back to the, the, the fragrance. I mean, you still, it is, it, Although we've said into new light, I still found this was, it's a big fragrance. It's oh, yeah. Very, yeah. It's a very, very long lasting fragrance. I don't think it's quite, um, in terms of sea and protection, it's not quite as big as the original, but it lasts very well. And it's, you know, it's, it's not yeah. a, a shy, retiring violet, pardon, pardon I the pun. Still, still smell it through my jacket there. Yeah. The, like, I mean, it's, uh, it's a powerful thing. It, yeah, it really is. And you still get, obviously, there's all that, like, lovely balsamic complexity going on. Um, I, I did feel that I, I missed the kind of the apoponax, the kind of sweet myrrh yeah. um, in this seems to be more vanilla, which is... Yeah, the, the sweetness in this I find isn't in balance in the same way that the original interlude is, because the mm. sweetness in the original comes slightly from that myrrh resinous aspect, whereas mm. in this it feels slightly artificially added. Mm. It's like someone has said, you need, to, you, know, you need to put a bit of sweetness in there for the masses. Yeah. So, oh, let's, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure what's gone into it, but let's inject a dose of X, Y, Z, whatever it is that gives it that slightly approachable designery feel. Yeah. Yeah. And it yeah. doesn't smell like, it doesn't smell like Dior Arm, but I can see the no. comparisons in terms of the motivation behind it. It's interesting. I would never in a it's million friendly, years yeah. smell this and I wouldn't have any um, association with Dior Arm or the Dior Arm Intense. But I have to say, a couple of times when I've worn this, I did get a hint of Fahrenheit towards the end. I just I got oh, okay. a slight kind of dark petrol thing. Again, I don't think I you don't think you're gonna spray this and anybody's going to think, Oh, are you wearing Fahrenheit? That's not gonna happen, but I got the Fahrenheit association a tiny bit more. But even so, more than anything else, it's interlude I get. I mean what I just I just this this fragrance it slightly confirms the fears I had. They seem to be doing a flanker. It seems to be doing a slightly dumbed down version of interlude. I mean, yeah, that's I it. mean you've got you've got to have you know within a brand you've got to have your kind of big fragrances. Well, not all your fragrances can be big, bombastic in your face things. And perhaps interlude is your big wow 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 shouty one. And then you have other things, even like Jubilation Twenty Five, which is a little bit a little bit easier to wear, or something like Reflection, which is much much easier to wear. Um, so you've already got that um, variety. So why do a dumbed down version? Yeah, of interlude. That's the thing. I think if you're a fan of if you're a fan of interlude in the first place, then you've signed up for that bold and daring, and slightly. And we've not talked about it, but the it's the animalic aspect of interlude, which I find it. You know, this like slightly cooked birchy aspect. Hmm. that I really enjoyed in the original. You've sort of signed up to that if you like Interlude. So why bring out Interlude 2 with a, with a touch of iris that sort of disappears after a while, everything else slightly sweetened and rounded? Hmm. Just okay. make, another fra make another fragrance, make something original. I and what it's... a way to stamp your new, your new artistic direction, you know, than to make a flanker. Do something, do something original. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's 2020. There's an opportunity there to to do Amouage 2020, whatever it might be. I, I think of yeah. some stupid name. The opportunity has been missed slightly, I think. Yeah. I mean, I've got, obviously the thing, you know, I went out and I, you know, I spent my money on, I bought this straight away because I, I was excited about this. Um, yeah. And I had really high hopes because, you know, it's a, it's a house I love, it's a house I've got lots of bottles from, and I, and I, I really, really like the original. And so it's not a bad fragrance at all. This. You know, this is a good, it's a good fragrance. It is good. But it's very, it's very pleasant to wear. If I didn't, if I'd never heard of it before and I didn't know the original, I'd smell it and think, God, yeah, good stuff. Mm. It's still got that brilliant, you know, obviously Pierre Negrin is a, you know, he's a, he is a genius. He is a master perfumer. He's done lots of Amorai. He's great in lube. Um, he is someone of extraordinary kind of uh, talent, but I don't think this is his best. No, I think it's and in, good. yeah. In, in musical terms, it's the equivalent for me of, um, you know, when you go to these operas, in, which are going to happen more and more, I guess, with the the way things are going. But you go to these operas in back gardens and you know, sort of little country festivals, and you have, you know, you have the ring cycle, but with a little band of ten players rather than the full orchestra. <laughs> this feels a bit like that. It's the same. It's the same piece. You can recognise that it's the same piece. 
but it's not the symphonic masterpiece that it was. It's just, hmm. it's a chamber version of it. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, I don't, I think I'll probably, I will sell this on and then once my other bottles of interlude run out, I will buy that instead of buying this. It's the yeah. same price. I don't, I don't see why you would buy it. I mean, if you think the original is too big and smoky a fragrance, get something else. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. I just, it's, it's a good fragrance, but what is the point? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's our conclusion. Uh, so... Uh, sorry, Amorage. I mean, I, I love yeah. Amorage. I, I, I don't want yeah. it to be kind of negative, but yeah, there we go. So, I mean, tell us if you We're just being it. honest here, guys. This is, you know, yeah. and like we say, we're not, re we've said this so many times, we're not reviewers. We generally come on here to talk about fragrances that we already love because mm. we're sharing our passion with, with you guys. Um, but sometimes we do come on here and we talk about a fragrance that we feel merits some attention and merits us just giving our five minutes of what we think. So it's not a review, it's just... Yeah, it's a chat. It's, You're, this is what we do in the pub, Dan and I, when we when we're allowed in a pub. And it's my reaction to having spent two hundred and sixty pounds. Yeah, completely legit. So there we go. So tell us what you think. Um, until next time, happy sniffing. Bye.